Hey everyone, I'm Danny and welcome to Wizardry Workshop. People have been asking me to come out with a set of book covers to fit the Harry Potter books, but do my own like DIY versions. So that's what I'm doing. I'm starting that today with the standard Book of Spells, grade one, and this is going to fit your Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone uh, US edition uh, hardback. It's this exact book that you need right here. Here is the ISBN and all that info, so pause the video and make sure you have the right book before you start. Basically, the idea for this is going to be, I'm, I'm calling it the Hogwarts Library series, where for each one of the Harry Potter books, I am going to do a replica design of one of the books that were in that year. So this one is the Standard Book of Spells Grade 1 for the first year at Hogwarts. Go ahead and check out the description box below for a list of all the supplies you're going to need, as well as the free downloadable templates, and let's get started. To start off, of course, you're going to need to print the templates. So we have the front cover here, and then we also have the little end papers that will go on the sides. I did not print these together because there isn't enough room on this page, so we're going to put them together. If you have the ability to print it all in one, that's awesome, and I also have templates that are all the full size thing. I also have a file that includes the printed title and the designs on here that we're going to be foiling in this tutorial, but if you don't have a way to foil it, you have the option to just print it on there. I'm using 11 by 17 paper. I also have templates for the eight and a half by 11, which is the standard paper size. It's basically half of one of these. So if that's what you're doing, you can do it that way. The only difference here is that it's going to be this half and this half, and you're gonna have to glue them together to get this full size. A lot of people have been wanting me to do a more in-depth tutorial when it comes to the foiling part, so I'm going to do that in this video, and in future videos I'm going to link to the timestamp where this part of the video starts. So if you don't want to see the uh, foiling part of the tutorial, you can go ahead and just skip ahead to the next chapter. To foil this, we are going to need to print out the part that we want to put the foil onto with an inkjet printer. So that's what I've done here. This is printed on an inkjet printer. Next, we want to take the part that is the actual foil part. So anything that's black is going to be foiled. I like to uh, print this out first and make sure they line up. So what I do is I just write on a piece of paper what my settings were. So this was single-sided, plain, landscape. And then I draw an arrow on which way I'm feeding it into the printer. And then when it prints out, I know exactly how to put this one into the printer in order for this to work. As you can see, it's printed out upside down compared to like where I've put it into the printer. Um, it says the standard book of spells. It's actually supposed to be this way. So if we line these up, you can tell because I have my little like disclaimer here, this is how it's supposed to be. So if you hold it like this with your print below and then this sample sheet above, all you have to do is follow the steps here. So we know that arrow is how we're putting it into the printer. So we're gonna flip it over and it's feeding in this way and we know what settings to use. Now I can just take this off and this is how that is going to go into the printer in order for that to line up. Another optional but recommended step is to use a light table because we want to make sure that it isn't like crazy off. And it's harder to see with this in particular cover, but I can see it. And basically all I'm doing is looking to make sure that the foil design um, lines up with the design below. And it does, it lines up pretty well. I can especially tell with the spine, it's pretty much perfectly centered there. Now, if this didn't line up, what I would do is shift it around until it does line up. So let's say right there it lined up. And as you can see, it is slightly off on that corner. And then over here, you can see where the bottom page kind of, you can see it poking out with this lined up. So what I would do is take a pencil or something and just make a little mark right there to outline where this new corner is. And then I would just take a ruler and measure how far over and down, or if it were in this corner, it would be over and up, you know, however, it needs to shift. So in this case, just for example, this would be about an eighth of an inch shift over and an eighth of an inch shift down. It's usually not that much, but it could be. 
it's usually like a sixteenth of an inch or something. It's off by just a tiny bit. So anyways, that's how I line it up. Then I would pull this file back into Photoshop or GIMP or whatever image editor you're using, and you would want to shift this file over and down by this exact amount. And then do another test print like this and overlay it again, turn on your uh, light table and make sure it all lines up like you want it to. And then if it does, you're good and go ahead and print it. So we'll make sure the arrow's going the right way, make sure they're lined up properly, take this one off and put this into the printer and print the black on top with a laser printer. It cannot be an inkjet printer. This part's inkjet. The part you want to foil is laser toner. It won't work if you do anything but laser toner on top of this. So I recommend you get at least a black and white laser printer to do your foiling. If you have the money and you can do it, I also recommend just skipping getting a black and white one and get a color laser printer because your prints are going to be so much better compared to your inkjet printer. And after you have printed that on top, you can see that the part that's the laser toner, it shines. It's a very shiny toner. And that's why I love laser printers because of that shine. You don't even need specialty paper. You get that shine on your prints just by default. So this is all lined up. We've done the inkjet print, the laser toner print, and now we're ready to, we're gonna cut this out and we're gonna foil it. I am using this Carl brand um, paper cutter. It's a really nice rolling paper cutter. If you're not doing too many pages, like maybe five pages max, this cuts super precise and really easy. It's just a little rolling like blade in there. So yeah, this one's really cool. So we've cut off all of the white. Let's get into the foiling. And I do use a mink foil uh, machine. I have two of these because I love this thing so much. But yes, all right, here's how we do it. First, go ahead and start warming this up because it does need to heat up like a laminator. So we're going to power it on and put the heat up to about three. While we wait, we will get out our roll of heat activated foil. This brand is uh, Deco Foil, which works as long as it is transfer foil, heat activated transfer foil, um, or you can just be safe and get the Mink brand if you want to make sure you're getting the right stuff. And all we're going to do is cut off a piece big enough to make sure that all the black parts that we want foiled is covered. And that beat means that the machine is heated up, so we're almost ready to go. That foil is definitely covering the entire part of the print that we want foiled and then a little bit extra just to be safe. The next thing we need is this plastic protective folder. Put this into the folder and make sure that we keep the foil covering exactly what we want it to cover. Um, I like to smooth it out. I feel that it helps a little bit to get the air bubbles out from in between. And then we can just go ahead and run it through the foiling machine. And there we go. Turn the foiling machine off and set it aside to cool. Check that out. That looks really cool. That silver foil. If you see like basically like glittery parts of uh, like specks of foil, all you need to do is wipe it off. I have this brush um, that I use for it. You can use whatever you want. A makeup brush would probably work really well because it's nice and uh, soft. And that concludes our foiling portion of this tutorial. Let's go ahead and put this book cover together. So now we want to cut out the end papers. So first we're going to do this long cut and then this long cut. We're not going to cut the middle out just yet. We can do this long side and this long side with the wizardry workshop symbol on them. And now for the middle part, you just want to cut basically right, cut it right in half. Now we have these two pieces and the middle piece, which is foiled. 
I need scrap paper for this because we're going to do some gluing just with a glue stick. And we're just going to glue um, where this extra white is right there. Now line the book cover up with it so that none of the white is visible. You just want to cover it up completely. And we're going to do that on both sides. So that's our full book cover, just like this. And as I mentioned before, this is for the very first book, uh, The Sorcerer's Stone, or The Philosopher's Stone, but you want to get The Sorcerer's Stone because you need the uh, US edition for it to fit. I will just remove the old cover, and then we're going to put this uh, new cover on here. You want to line up the spine first and get it as perfectly lined up as you possibly can. And there we go. We have the standard book of spells, grade one, to cover your Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. I will be giving away one of these book covers, book not included, just the cover, but if you're interested, the link is in the description box below. If you've made it all the way to the end of the video with me, thank you so much. You are a wizard, Harry. And let me know what you think of this book cover. They are all going to um, chorus, correspond with the actual year of the book. So this is uh, year one, so we're doing the standard book of spells, grade one. I haven't decided what all the other book covers that I'm going to do are quite yet. I'm going to just kind of choose as I go. So yeah, that's what I'm doing. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.